Hi, this is Jose Della Portilla, Technical Training Manager with Linux HVAC Learning Solutions. What I want to talk to you today is about these mystical symbols that we see on some of our multimeters. They're kind of like hieroglyphics, and some of us may understand what the symbols mean, others may not. And depending on your meter, the symbols may be pretty easy to read, or they could be more complicated. So let's go ahead and turn the dial on our meter and explain the settings one at a time. The first one that I'm going to turn to here says volts AC. So if I were going to measure HC voltage, I could take my meter leads and actually measure the voltage of the circuit. But notice the image of the little jaws there. Being a field piece meter, this allows me to take the leads off the top of my meter and snap on the amp probe attachment or the amp clamp attachment and be able to measure the amperage of a circuit without breaking the wires. We can then turn onto the next dial. And here we see the dial that says HZ, that stands for Hertz, or the frequency of the electricity. How many times a second the alternating current is turning back and forth on itself? Now you may not use this on regular jobs, but if you're working on something like a VFD, a variable frequency drive, we alternate the frequency, or the number of times per second the alternating current turns back and forth to vary the speed of a motor. Very important to know. The next symbol here. This little horseshoe symbol here is the Greek symbol for omega. It's also the symbol used to represent ohms or resistance. So if we were testing a load, a motor, a relay, a coil, a transformer, and wanted to know if it had resistance, we would turn our meter to the omega symbol to measure the resistance. Now, right next down here is the little UADC symbol. This is not milliamps, but this is microamps for checking a flame sensor. To do that, I would set the meter to microamps DC. I would take my meter leads and I would disconnect one wire from the flame sensor and connect it to my meter lead. And I would take the other meter lead and connect it to where the flame sensor wire was connected onto the flame sensing probe. When the burners ignite, I would directly read the flame sensor current on my meter. Now, depending on the meter you have, it may have a temperature scale. For example, here we have Fahrenheit and Celsius. We can read 400 or up to 1,000 degrees. What we want to do is make sure that if we know the temperature range we're working on, we stick to the scale closest to the range. We don't want to connect to a scale or connect measure a temperature on a scale that's too low for what we're reading. The next scale over on our meter is the microfarads. This is going to be used to test capacitors. And it tells you right on the meter here the range of capacitance it's good for. 400 microfarads. And then over here, our next scale is our volts DC. This is for direct current. Measuring DC circuitry, measuring some of the current that you might see through electronics. And it has different scales. And one of them is actually auto ranging which is great because it means the meter will automatically adjust itself to the right voltage. And finally, the last scale is a little sound symbol, which means continuity testing. The continuity tester can be used to check the wire to see if a wire is broken, to check a coil to see if the coil of wire is good. One word of caution, don't become overconfident on the continuity tester. It only tells you that one of the wires is good. If we're using a stranded wire, that's made up of multiple strands within one jacket, well, that could only mean that one wire is good. The other could all be broken and not be able to carry the current that you need. A couple other things you really need to spend the time to notice about your meter is some of the other buttons and features it may have. For example, the min-max scale to capture the highest and lowest values of whatever you're reading. And on this meter, the NCV stands for non-contact voltage. If I take the top of the meter and dangle it in front of a wire and press down, it'll emit a buzz to let me know if that wire has voltage. The louder the buzz is, the higher the voltage of the circuit. One other thing I want to show you is to get to know your meter because here we have the amp probe connection or the amp clamp connection. We can put it right on top of the meter. Or with a field piece meter, you can disconnect the leads from your, or the tips from your leads and plug them in here so that we can remotely mount the amp meter inside the circuit, put the blower door back on and measure current. So this is just a brief video explaining some of the things that your meters can do.
So be sure to tune in for our other videos so you can learn more ways to electrically troubleshoot and diagnose circuits. Thank you.